Hi everyone, my name is Jess. This is my summary of learning for ECS 203. Here I just have a little bit of a little bit of an agenda. We can skip through that. All right, so entering the, into this course, I didn't really have expectations of getting much out of it. It was just another ECS course I needed to complete to get one step closer to my degree. I had a completely closed off mind in that I felt like I knew enough about my pedagogy and accommodating different needs and being inclusive. It goes without saying that I was far off with that assumption. Like we said in our final class, anti-oppressive education is not a destination. You will never get there, but it's something I can always strive for. Now at the end of the semester, I feel like I've gained some insight on how curriculum can oppress and how my pedagogy has adapted because of that. At any time, I want my classroom to be safe for all students. That can't happen if I'm directly or indirectly ignoring my own biases and common sense narratives. With that being said, let's get into some detail about how my understandings of curriculum have evolved. My impression of curriculum was the same as everyone else's when we begun the course. Curriculum is a mandated outline of what needs to be taught, often created by a higher governing body. It has outcomes and indicators in which you are to successfully complete their teaching so each student can become an engaged citizen in society. Although some pieces of these statements have some truth to them, curriculum goes far and wide beyond those definitions. There is your formal curriculum, which is synonymous with these ideas. It's the objectives, content, resources, and assessment all used to make linear progress in terms of a student's development. However, this type doesn't acknowledge how privilege, status, citizenship, and culture influence these outcomes. It's like the Tyler rationale, only focused on effectiveness and goal attainment, carefully designed for society's best. There are other types of curriculum as well, kid and curriculum, for example, the indirect learnings that aren't as much taught by the teacher, but implied by education as a whole. These can be both positive and negative. There's no curriculum as well, the student, the stuff that schools avoid but inadvertently send messages about by not teaching them. There's curriculum as a place and praxis, the curriculum that is built on the foundation of students' experiences and processes. All these terms encapsulate learning as an ongoing process, as lived events and connections to surroundings. Curriculum isn't always just what is listed on a website or document. It is what we teach as well as what students gain from it. That was one of the biggest changes in my knowledge from this term. Next, we're going to move on to my pedagogy. So, pedagogy has a direct influence on this because it's how we teach based on our own philosophies, philosophies, beliefs, and experiences. It's the delivery method of all types of curriculums. I feel like I had a fairly good idea of what my pedagogy was at the beginning of class. However, I can say that the underlying themes within my pedagogy, like inclusiveness, love, and growth as a person, have only become more apparent. Listed here are a few statements that I think embody what I've taken from this class. First, to teach is to have genuine love for students. Otherwise, there is no chance you can be inviting and hospitable for them. Next, inclusive education is for everyone, regardless of ability, language, culture, and background. This ties into the mindset that children are perfectly made for school. When students struggle or score poorly on a test, that isn't a testament to their capabilities or individuality. It's simply a reflection that the way in which they've been trying to learn has not been effective. Next, to be neutral is to support the status quo. This was a huge concept in relation to uh, Kumashiro and bias and dominant narratives. Educators are never neutral, nor is education. But I'll say it again, anti-oppressive education is not a destination, but an ongoing process. Though I have yet to work in a classroom environment because of the pandemic, I hope that when I do, my students feel welcomed to be their truest selves, no matter what that looks like. Next is the hard stuff about cognitive dissonance and how I've been able to challenge what I thought I knew through the entire semester. Generally speaking, I'm a fairly laid back person. I know my place and I definitely know that there are people who are far more knowledgeable than I am across the board but I'm also the type of person who craves feedback and challenges simply because of my competitive spirit. I know that through the process of adversity, I can grow personally and professionally. My biggest moments of discomfort in class came with our treaty education discussions. 
I had basic knowledge, like we're all treaty citizens and there needs to be spirit and intent with our curriculum. But anything beyond that, I wasn't quite sure of. I was worried about saying or doing the wrong things or accidentally being disrespectful with my lessons. After all, so many people view Indigenous culture as one branch of knowledge, when in reality, it's boundless. Because of this, one of our lectures really stuck out to me, specifically when we had the guest speaker Raquel come in. She did a great job answering questions that seemed, seemed awkward or weird to ask. She presented us with the idea that it's better to say something and say it wrong than to say nothing at all. This goes back to the idea of neutrality. Saying nothing and claiming you're neutral as an educator actively supports those narratives that we're looking to deconstruct. Although this, was, although this was an uncomfortable realization for me, I know it's important to understand. Next is one of my favorite quotes that reads, Comfort is the enemy of progress by P.T. Barnum. I truly believe this can be applied to any aspect of life. It reaffirms the idea that as a teacher, I will never stop learning and I'll never stop unlearning. Similarly, students will grow so much when they are both supported and challenged in the face of adversity. In closing, I want to say thank you all for challenging me throughout this class. I learned so much through our deep discussions, laughter, and debates. Good luck on your final exams.